Hi, I got this $200 racing wheel stand and today we'll find out what happens if we attach a 20 Nm wheelbase to it. This is the wheel stand Challenger 301 from Racting. And it's one of the cheapest wheel stands including a seat you can get on the internet. Racting sent me this for a review. And I will give you my honest opinion if it's worth the money and what are the pros and cons of such a budget setup. Now let's check the features. The Challenger 301 is a foldable wheel stand. You can adjust several things like the angle of your seat and the base plate. Also you can change the placing of your pedals. And as we are all not getting younger, it's easy to get in and out. According to the website, it's compatible with all the big brands like Logitech, Fanatec and Thrustmaster and many more. But first comes the assembling. And I have to say, the hardest thing about assembling was to get a thing to my home. After that you can get the stand ready to race in about 10 minutes. Unwrapping everything took in fact longer than getting the parts together. The few tools you need are also included in the package. To test this rig, I choose the Fanatec Podium F1 with the DD1 wheelbase. This is the strongest PS5 compatible wheelbase on the market and it generates up to 20 Nm of torch. So this is the perfect tool to push this rig to its limits. When you push the wheel up and down, you see some significant movement. When I push from the side, it's quite sturdy. But of course there's much more movement than in a high-end rig. So now let's see how the Challenger 301 performs in action. My first test was the recent online time trail using the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo Group 4 car. I used my regular force feedback settings. About 50% on the wheelbase and 5 out of 10 in the game. You see when you switch your direction pretty fast the rig starts to shake. But it's not too, so hard that it distracts you too much. As long as you're driving smooth it's not a problem and you can get some good lap times. But what if we switch our wheelbase to its maximum settings? Will this rig survive or will it just collapse? This time we are on the Nordschleife and we're driving the Porsche 919 hybrid. So we have a high downforce car and the stickiest tires possible. In addition this generates the maximum force feedback you can get out of this game. You see there's a lot of movement in the rig, which is obvious as the steel frame is pretty thin. But even after testing this wheel stand for a couple of minutes, nothing got loose and the seat didn't collapse. Of course there's a lot less movement in my high-end R seat, but this comes at a price which is almost 5 to 6 times as much as the Racting seat. And still you can't eliminate the wobbling completely, as you can see here with the exact same settings. But I have to say this is a really unrealistic scenario, because those settings make the car almost undrivable and the wheelbase starts clipping all the time. So to make this more realistic, I lowered the force feedback to about 60%. This is still pretty strong, but makes the car drivable at least. After testing this rig for a couple of days, here are my pros and cons. My first pro is its price. Compared to other wheel stands and rigs, it's quite cheap with 200 US dollars, 200 euros. Especially as it includes the seat and the frame. 
My next point, it's really easy to build up and easy to put away. So if you don't have the space for a permanent rig, the Racting Challenger 301 is a good solution. It's compatible with a wide range of steering wheels and wheelbases. So it doesn't matter if you have a DD Pro or some entry level Logitech or Thrustmaster wheel, everything will fit onto this rig. And my final point, the seat design makes it really comfortable even on longer driving sessions. But the Racting Challenger 301 also comes with some cons. In this price range the frames are really thin and so these rigs will move a lot more than those in the higher price range. So if you have a relaxed and smooth driving style and prefer some lower force feedback settings I guess you are fine with this rig. Otherwise the shaking can be quite distracting and also swallow some of your force feedback as the force goes straight into the rig and not into your hands. Another point is, there are certain parts where metal meets metal which can cause some ugly scratches. For example the screws that adjust the pedal plate and on the opening mechanism of your seat. You can adjust the distance of your pedals, but you can't adjust the distance to your wheel. So depending on your high and the wheel you're using, it's possible you're either too far away or too close to the wheel. And my final negative is the lack of a cable management system. All in all, I think it's a good rig for its price. Especially if your alternative is to have no rig at all. It will do its job and it's easy for beginners. But if you're a real racing enthusiast and you drive with some high force feedback wheels, I would recommend to go for a rig in a higher price range, to get more stability and less flex. Check out my affiliate link in the video description to see more rigs and wheel stands from Racting. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and also hit the subscribe button for my channel and the bell to get a notification for all my future videos.